Hi, this is your host Abdul Bharatiya and today we have with us once again Guy Martin, Director of Open Source and Standards at NVIDIA and today we are going to talk about a new foundation Alliance for Open USD or Universal Scene Description. So there are a lot to talk about today but guys uh, once again great to see you. Good to see you Swap. Talk a bit about what is Alliance for Open USD? Also, when we look at Linux Foundation, it's foundation of foundations. So I also mm -hmm. want to understand the organizational structure of this uh, uh, project or foundation. And I think we should even go back back to the beginning of what is Open USD, right? So Open USD stands for Open Universal Scene Description. It's the technology that Pixar came up with to be able to effectively describe anything in a 3D scene. And they use this for their movies because they need to be able to describe objects, lighting, uh, backgrounds, all of that stuff. And so they open sourced this in about uh, 2015. Um, and what they found was that the reason they did that is that it was really, really important for them to be able to work effectively and share 3D content. But they realized that there were a lot of other people out there that needed to do the same thing. And originally that was in the, the visual effects and, and film and media and entertainment industries. But what ended up happening was a lot of other organizations, NVIDIA among them, realized that, hey, we all have to be able to do uh, the description of 3D scenes effectively, uh, in our case, in our Omniverse platform. And so we started adopting this. So uh, fast forward a few years. And as we know Swap very well, that open source projects are awesome, we're wonderful. We, we love being a part of that community. But when you get to a certain point with an open source project, if you want greater adoption, you need to think about standardization, especially with a fundamental technology like OpenUSD. We like to think of this as almost the HTML moment of 3D, right? Uh, HTML started out, it wasn't really standardized, multiple implementations, things started to fragment a little bit. Uh, we're at a point with OpenUSD where obviously we don't want that to happen. We believe, and uh, so does Pixar and, and all the other members of, of this new alliance believe that it's really important uh, for this technology to become a standard and to allow for multiple interoperable implementations. So uh, we founded the alliance, uh, obviously you saw the announcement and um, we're really excited about it because I think it, it is an opportunity to do an open standard, right? To do a standard that is royalty free, uh, and to, a to do a standard that allows multiple folks to come in and help define what is the core of OpenUSD and have there be complementary and interoperable implementations. Obviously, Pixar's uh, is the first implementation that, that has been developed. What is the need for this alliance? Because as you also said, that project was on OpenUSD was already open source by Pixel. So what was the need for building an alliance around the project? Right, I think it's really important for standardization and, and swap, you know, I have a background in open source, but open also open standards as well, two years running Oasis Open. And I think I got a, a big education, not only there, but also in other projects around uh, standardization to recognize that open source is awesome, but you also need a standard for fundamental technologies like this. And there's two main reasons. One I touched on a little earlier, which is the ability to have alternate implementations that retain compatibility, right? So you have implementations maybe in a different language, uh, in, a, in a different technology stack that, that, that are needed. But I think the other important thing is that there is a comfort factor. There is a factor that businesses can, can recognize, hey, I, something like OpenUSD being a standard, I can rely on it, right? I can build my business on it. I can build my technology stack on it, knowing that it's going to be supported and continue to be maintained. So there's, there's a little bit of that, that business comfort factor um, around making sure that something is a standard. I, once again, want to talk about the, the organizational structure of this one. Is it part of any existing foundation or is it going to be a new foundation uh, within its own right? You know, there was a lot of thought um, as to where, where standardization for open USD could go. And uh, a lot of people had different opinions and, and different thoughts as to where this should go, whether it should fold into an existing uh, project or standards body. The founding members uh, were having a lot of conversations about where we should build this USD standardization effort. And one of the things that we all agreed on is that coming to the Linux Foundation's Joint Development Foundation gave us the opportunity to have what I would call the best of both worlds have the, the necessary rigor that needs to be in place so that you can take any standards that we develop and take them to an international standards body like ISO or others. So you need to have that rigor, you need to have those processes. But also we needed a flexible governance model. I think one of the things that has been 
uh, a little bit of a problem sometimes in the standards world. People look at standards and go, oh my gosh, it's going to be three years before we get anything, right? Uh, Open USD as a technology is evolving fast enough that we needed a flexible governance model that let us adapt uh, and innovate at the scale and the speed that Open USD was was going, but again, also have the the right uh, the right balance of rigor so that when we create a specification, it can become an international standard. Uh, that's extremely important if you look at things like HTML. Right, they're not just North American; they became an international standard. So again, I think we we look at this as a, a similar HTML moment, but for the three D ecosystem. Can you also talk about what are the other you know foundation within Linux Foundation that you folks are already working together? Are you looking forward? Hey, these are the perfect sync that we should be working with closely with them. Well, I mean, Academy Software Foundation is the most obvious answer there because they already, even though they don't host the Open USD project, there are several Open USD working groups where practitioners of OpenUSD are doing their work. So I think it's extremely important. And we're actually pursuing a, a liaison agreement, an official liaison agreement with, um, with the Academy Software Foundation, because we believe that the work that's already going on in media and entertainment within OpenUSD is the perfect opportunity to, to have some of that work inform what's going on in the standard. Um, there are also other possibilities at some point down the line within, within the Linux Foundation, potentially things like the Open3D Foundation that is working on, on, on 3D engines. But I think it's more than just what's going on in the Linux Foundation. We, we have said, you know, a lot of people have, have brought up, well, what about Kronos and what about the GLTF standard, which is, is a great 3D delivery uh, format standard. And our intention, we're already pursuing a liaison agreement with Kronos from, from AOUSD because it's really, really important for USD and GLTF to work effectively together. There's a lot of companies that have made significant investments in both ecosystems, and, and it's our job to make sure that we have great collaboration on standards that can work together. Are there other standards or other bodies uh, which are doing, uh, because uh, you know, there may be some time overlaps, there may be some time gaps, where do you see, yeah, some work is going on and you are also looking for collaboration or you see that, hey, yeah, they are doing something, but this is the gap that we are trying to fill. If you break it down today, people look at USD as a great authoring uh, format, right? A great editing format and also some some amount of runtime. And GLTF is a great runtime and delivery, lightweight runtime and delivery format for, for 3D content. And really, I think what we're what we're seeing is we want to make sure that both of those kind of meet somewhere in the middle so that we actually don't have gaps. Right. And I think there is people like to there are a lot of people that like to pit GLTF and USD together uh, against each other. And I think that's actually not the case. There's a lot of opportunity for great collaboration so that, you know, both of those those standards fulfill what, what they were designed to do. Since the focus of, uh, you know, this alliance is mostly on a standard, um, but when we look at OpenUSD, is there any code also going to get involved? That is totally different or out of the scope at this moment. Yeah, well, the, the scope of the organization is to develop the standard, right? And I think the, the very first thing that we were doing is standing up at what we call a core specification working group. The, the governance model of AOUSD allows us to have multiple working groups. The first one we're standing up is the core specification working group. And their job is going to be to take a look at the, the Pixar code base and basically agree on what, what is considered the core, right? The core pieces of, of that technology. And then once that is defined, the reference implementation for that core is already written. It's the, it's the Pixar OpenUSD repository. Uh, but then you can imagine after we get that core done, or as we're getting that core finalized, you're going to have a lot of other working groups that probably need to be started up. Everything from physics to animation, rigging, materials, um, solid modeling, the, the list goes on. And those working groups, um, as, they, as they begin to build their standard, are probably going to need some reference implementations. And there, so there, there is a possibility that there could be some code uh, built as a reference implementation that would live within AOUSD. But the, the, the benefit, obviously, is if you have a standard and you have multiple reference implementations, you know, you have, you have that ability to, to pick and choose and, and kind of have the, the best of both worlds and the, and the best fit for uh, fit of purpose for, for implementations that conform to the standard. Can you talk about who are the existing members and what other you know, players that you are looking at working closely with? The first uh, five founding members of this alliance are Pixar, Adobe, Apple, Autodesk, and those of us here at NVIDIA. 
And, you know, as we, as we got this group together, I th- we think it represents a great cross-section of companies that are not only from different parts of, of the industry, but also who the companies who have been doing the most uh, amount of work within OpenUSD today to, to make it better and to continue to improve it. But we recognized as we were building this alliance that obviously it couldn't be just those five companies. We needed a, a broad cross-section of support. So we're really excited that when we launched this, we were able to secure seven additional general members in addition to our, our founding members. And those general members are Cesium, Epic, Foundry, Hexagon, IKEA, SideFX, and Unity. So again, a, a great cross-section of both media and entertainment uh, spaces, industrial, uh, architectural, uh, and AC. So I think it's a, it's a great group. Uh, we're looking forward to obviously having additional general members, uh, additional companies that want to come on board with us and, and help help define this standard. I mean, I think it's, it's again, a, a watershed moment similar to what HTML was in the 2D world. Uh, everything that we have today in 3D is just going to continue to increase, right? We're, we're talking about not only, you know, describing 3D scenes in movies, but we're talking about um, digital, digitalizing physical processes, right? Building factories, um, you know, uh, digital twins of, of things that are, are in the real world. We, we need the equivalent of that in 3D in, in, the, uh, in the virtual world. Since, you know, you mentioned the word virtual and, of course, Linux function, you folks also have a Metaverse Foundation as well. And uh, next year, when Apple comes up with the Vision Pro, it will once again, just like uh, this year part and all those things that change the whole industry, uh, we will see a lot of, you know, uh, progress in that. Uh, how do you see the scope of this alliance and also a lot of open source projects uh, that you earlier mentioned? Um, when we look at the whole virtual reality world, are you see no, no, the, the scope of uh, this alliance is limited to, to what we are doing in this space. I think the scope of AOUSD goes you know, basically into whatever whatever you want to call as a 3D world, right? Some people call it metaverse. Some people call it industrial digitalization. But I think what's interesting and important is that it's all 3D. It's 3D content. It's taking things that you have in the real world and making a full fidelity visualization digital twin of, of that thing, right? Um, that's, that's one big use case. And I think that use case is the one where I see a lot of growth going forward, right? I mean, you you do a lot of pre-visualization now, right? 3D design of buildings, of factories, that stuff has been going on for a while. We're now, I think, ready to take the next step beyond just pre-visualization and actually building a, a full-scale replica, a full replica uh, that is what we call a digital twin, right? Something that you not only can see what is going, what this thing is going to be uh, before you build it in real life, but actually once it's built and you've got sensors and you've got everything that's, that's already a part of that physical thing, feeding data back into a live visual twin, it's the whole, it's the whole premise of what we're building in Omniverse and NVIDIA. And it's really exciting because it, it's kind of, we like to say, almost like a time machine, right? You can see what's happening at the beginning before you build something in, in real life. And then when you actually build the thing, you can, um, you can see what's going on in, in real time. And if there's a fault, if there's something that happens, you just have to rewind. You can do a root cause analysis of, of what caused that thing. And then you can also, we like to say, jump ahead into the future, right? I think this is where a lot of the exciting stuff around um, AI and generative AI and synthetic data generation, right? Um, not only factories, but, but things like um, you know, autonomous driving. Right? You want to be able to have something where you can train an AI on all the possible combinations. And the only way to actually do that effectively is to synthetically data, uh, generate the data under all the different possible conditions and maybe some conditions that we can even imagine as humans, generate all that data, have the AI do that uh, and learn, right? And learn in, in an advanced, learn way, way faster than in real time. And again, USD is the absolute core of all that because you've got to be able to effectively describe that 3D scene and not just what it looks like, but what happens with materials, right? What happens when you hit, hit a material with a radar or a LIDAR, right? So the, the thing that we loved about USD and the reason we made it the core of Omniverse is that its extensibility is really, really important. But now 
you want you want to have extensibility. We know this, right? You want to have extensibility, but you also want to have the ability to have um, interoperability. So I think that's where the, this foundation is really going to, and, and this alliance is really going to focus is on that interoperability piece. Uh, what kind of organizations you are looking that should become part of this alliance uh, where you do see, hey, those will add value at the same time, they'll get a lot of value by joining this alliance. Obviously we can't talk about folks that we're currently approaching right now, but I think it's really important that anybody that wants to come in and have something to do with 3D, Right. And that could be anybody from systems level vendors to, you know, vendors of technologies that are used in AECO, right, or manufacturing. So I think we, we've talked about before, you and I in the past swap, that, you know, pretty much any, everybody who's involved in building something in the physical world today is, is a software company to some degree, right? They, they need software. And so if they need to describe something as, as a 3D scene, it's really, really important that, you know, that if they want to help, both drive this standard as well as understand what this standard is going to be around how to describe 3D content in OpenUSD, that we welcome them to come join AOUSD. We welcome them to come join us in the Alliance. One more exciting thing about this technology, there are certain technologies which are limited to certain, you know, industries, uh, but there are certain, like if you remember early days, we used to talk about, hey, digital transformation, cloud, and you're like, you should be, you should have a a software presence, you know, otherwise your company will not exist. Then you're like, hey, you should have cloud. Then we'll start talking about AI ML is very critically. Otherwise, similarly, as you were saying, HTML was core to 2D world. The world that we are moving towards, and it's it's just a matter of time, the things will be 3D. Uh, it's not just that we will be wearing glasses, but a lot of things that we are doing. I mean, we will be getting rid of all these, you know, two-dimensional screens. Do you also see that, as you're saying, that the company, whichever is planning to do 3D, or you think it is right to say that companies, of course, it's too early at this time, that eventually every company should have presence in the 3D world, just the way every company now has a website or a cloud presence. I, I think that's that's the world we're going to, right? The world that we're going to is 3D, right? We've lived in, in 2D world and, and text and, and flat content for a long time, and that, that will can still continue to exist. I don't think anybody is thinking that that's going to go away. But I mean, more and more, you're going to have both consumer level experiences, right? Gaming, those sorts of things, you know, immersive, immersive entertainment. But even more importantly, things that are coming around around XR, AR, being able to take and augment what's in the in the in the physical world, as well as simulate what's in the physical world, right? I think to me, that's the most exciting area of innovation that's that's coming up. Is gaming is fantastic, right? We all love gaming, and we love gaming at Nvidia, clearly. But I think we also see a huge, huge potential for what we're calling industrial digitalization, right? These um, industrial processes, which we've only taken advantage of from a technology standpoint, again, in that pre-visualization, hey, let me, let me you know, build this thing you know, in a virtual world before I build it in real life. That, that next step, that next core leap is going to be, don't just pre-visualize it, but actually have that digital twin where you're interacting um, with that physical thing in a virtual world and taking advantage of all of the kinds of, of things you can do by being able to simulate things in real time and by a, being able to, to do root cause analysis when, when things go wrong in the physical side. Just give us a kind of glimpse of what are the things that you folks are working on, you'll be working on this year. I think the first thing the Alliance has to do is actually build out the core specification. It's the reason that the core specification working group was the one that we started with as we launched. But I think you're probably going to have to see, I can't make promises in this first year, but I think uh, one that keeps coming um, up repeatedly is materials. I think materials is something that is going to be super important um, as we go forward in 3D, not only just from how things look, but again, in an industrial digitalization case, how things behave, right? How things react. Can you, can you build and make sure you have uh, a solid set of uh, interoperable material standards so that you can describe how something looks, but also how it behaves in, in the real world. Uh, I think those that, that's, that's a big one. Uh, one thing for the AOUSD is that as, as the governing board, uh, I'm a member of the governing board, as the governing board, our job is to make sure that you know, we proceed at a pace that allows us to have innovation, but make sure that we get work done, right? The, the core output of, of this alliance is, is, a, is a standard and a specification. And so making sure that we get the core specification up and running uh, and, and smoothly uh, developed is going to be super important. And then I think you'll probably see probably towards the end of our, our first year where we'll start to make some 
um, adjustments and figure out what other working groups make sense. Pat, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, uh, talk about uh, this alliance uh, on OpenUSD. Thanks for all those insights. And I would love to chat with you again when, as you said, you know, a lot of things are in the pipeline. I would love to talk about those as well. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Swap. We're super excited and appreciate the chance to chat with you today.